When a game or franchise becomes popular, it's almost inevitable that they'll be adapted into media outside of video games. TV shows, movies, comic books, sometimes even theatrical plays, like in the case of Ace Attorney or Persona. Naturally, with Tekken being one of the most successful fighting game series, it's also been adapted into various media over the years. And yet, not much of it is well known among players or the FGC at large. That's why today, we want to go over the history of Tekken adaptations and see how it was brought over to different kinds of media. This is Arya from That Blasted Salami, let's get into this. Surprisingly enough, the first ever Tekken adaptation wasn't an anime or a manga, as one might expect from a Japanese franchise. It was actually a comic book made in the US. Considering that Tekken barely had a story at that point in time, it's hard to blame the adaptation for taking some liberties. But the result is, nonetheless, hilariously awful. For starters, the Devil Gene is suddenly replaced with the mysterious Toshin Stones, and instead of settling their feud through the tournament, Heihachi and Kazuya were working together to find the aforementioned stones. All until Heihachi went too hard on Kazuya during sparring, which caused the latter to get so mad that he falls off a cliff after missing an attack. Outside the sloppy attempts to rearrange Tekken's story into something more conventional, the comic book was rife with terrible dialogue, bad paneling, gaudy font choices, and some bizarre sound effects, like the infamous rip splists. The comic book was initially intended to go on for a while, but was quickly cancelled after the second issue. It wouldn't take long until there was another attempt to create a Tekken comic book. The art is much nicer this time round, and there's less to complain about in terms of paneling and presentation. But the writing is, once again, a complete mess. The first chapter mixes events of both Tekken 3 and Tekken Tag Tournament and introduces some mind-boggling details. For starters, Toshin stones are still a thing and seem to come from Ancient Ogre, or Toshin in this universe. Jun's transformation into Unknown is explained as her being a daughter of Angel and turning into a deity of Toshin. This also bestows upon her the duty to protect Ogre's babies, who just appear for some reason. Ultimately though, it doesn't feel like a story that has much to do with Tekken and it's not hard to see why only one chapter of it ever saw the light of day, even though it could have been funny to see where it goes. As they say, third time's the charm. The last major comic book adaptation of Tekken is a far cry from its predecessors. While it still takes major liberties with the storyline, it does so in a very entertaining manner. And for once, we actually got a Tekken comic with proper care put into the action, from nice choreography to referencing the in-game attacks. Despite not being awfully ambitious, it's remarkable that Blood Feud attempts to elaborate on Jin's internal struggle with the Devil Gene, something that even the games usually just omit. As his struggle gets harder, the conflict just keeps escalating until the eventual climax where Angel confronts Devil Jin. While the final battle is a bit anticlimactic, Blood Feud generally delivers on what you'd expect from a Tekken comic and is a perfect example of how a non-canon adaptation can explore parts of the story that the main titles do not. The Tekken Tetsuman manga is much heftier in volume compared to the other Tekken comics, yet much less remarkable. Neither bad nor particularly good, it simply served as a more comedic take on the Tekken 6 storyline. It ignores Azazel entirely and instead builds around the Mishima family feud, with Asuka serving as the protagonist who sets out to stop this conflict at any cost. But of course, the main plot is far from being the focus, as each chapter of the manga leans more into either humor, fighting, gratuitous fan service, or a combination of all three. Fighting games have been some of the first video games to receive film adaptations, with Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat getting their own movies in the mid-90s. Despite being rather successful, Tekken was late to the party, the talks about making a movie didn't even start until 2002 and didn't come to fruition until 2010. However, the resulting movie was Tekken in name only, as the creators wanted to make it more realistic and grounded, which meant getting rid of many of the things that make Tekken what it is. Instead, we're treated to a bizarre, almost 
post-apocalyptic setting where the world is divided between mega corporations, with the Tekken company controlling North America and running the Tekken tournament in the Tekken City, where the strongest fighters from all over the world come to fight for money and fame. It's hard to express just how absurd this movie is to anyone familiar with Tekken. You got Jin grinding against Christy at a nightclub, Brian replacing his bones with flex steel to cheat, and Kazuya entering the fight with his signature battle axes? The fighting is meant to be the redeeming factor for this movie, but despite putting effort into the choreography, it's constantly undermined by the frantic editing. The second movie, Kazuya's Revenge, has even less to do with Tekken, but at least it fares slightly better in regards to action. Regardless, both movies were critical and commercial flops, even getting a harsh response from Harada himself, who noted that Bandai Namco didn't have much control over production. The first Tekken anime was amongst the earliest adaptations. On the surface, this medium is perfect for Tekken. In the world of animation, you can easily do justice to the over-the-top aspect of fighting games with flashy characters, intense fights, and attacks that no human is capable of. Does the Tekken anime deliver that? No, not really. Similar to other works we went over, the action is one of the weakest elements of this anime. Across its hour-long runtime, you won't see much combat, and when it does happen, it's either over within a few hits, or gets interrupted by tedious dialogue about revenge or the cycle of violence. As one might expect, there's not much going on in terms of writing. It's once again a reiteration of the Mishima conflict that borrows bits and pieces from the first three games and tells a story about Jun and Lei trying to investigate Mishima Zaibatsu's activities by infiltrating the tournament. There are some highlights, however. On the so bad it's good side, we have Lee Chowland's projects of creating invisible bioengineered dinosaur commandos. And on the other side, there is a touching subplot about Jack 2 putting his life on the line to protect a little orphan who's awoken his consciousness. After some less than stellar adaptations, Namco themselves stepped up to make a movie that would satisfy the demand for a proper adaptation of Tekken. To do that, they got the help of Digital Frontier, who'd previously worked on Tekken cinematics. The script was handled by an industry veteran, Dai Sato, who previously worked on Cowboy Bebop and Ghost in the Shell. And on top of that, Harada was overseeing the whole project. It's clear from start to finish that Blood Vengeance wanted to appeal to the fans first and foremost. Instead of discarding the sillier parts of Tekken, they got fully embraced, and the movie isn't afraid to throw in some elements that only those familiar with the games would understand. What's also refreshing is that while the plot still centered around the Mishimas, making Shao Yu the protagonist allows us to experience a perspective that's never really represented in the games, whilst also making the final showdown that much more impactful. It's far from being a perfect movie, but it's a great piece of fan service, with lots of well choreographed action, classic tech and humor, and the final showdown that plays out the ultimate what if scenario of Jin fully transforming into a devil and Heihachi getting a crazy power-up of his own. Bloodline is the latest Tekken adaptation, a Netflix anime series that goes back to the past and explores a time in Tekken's lore that never got much attention before. Specifically, the years leading up to Tekken 3, Jin's upbringing, and Jun's role in his life. Even though Jun's presence doesn't last long, the series does a great job of establishing her impact on Jin's future, something that can be felt throughout the franchise. There are also a few surprises along the way, such as incorporating Leroy into their retelling of Tekken 3. When it came to presentation, the series received some criticism for the weird blocky shading, but the animation itself is consistently smooth, and is by far the most faithful adaptation of Tekken's combat. The fans will instantly recognize the abundance of attacks that were taken straight from the games, and they even went the extra step by inviting pro players Yu and Nobby to supervise the battles and make them as authentic as possible. And that concludes our dive into Tekken Media. While there's still more out there, like the Tekken 3 and Tekken Tag Tournament manga, most of those entries are not quite as notable or outright inaccessible due to not being translated or distributed. 
If you've seen or read any of the works we've mentioned, please feel free to share your opinion about them in the comments. Tell us which ones were your favorites, or if you'd like to see more Tekken adaptations down the line. Until next time, this has been Arya from TBS, wishing you an excellent day.